Hello, my name is Rudy Balasabas, and today I'll be going over the jobs module in Business Central. If you are doing some sort of project accounting in your organization or you manage jobs in general, this is a good module to, um, to consider implementing. Um, we have a few clients that use it, but there are some clients also that aren't really familiar that this module even exists, so hopefully this will be a helpful video for you. So the first thing I wanted to cover is the job hierarchy itself and how things are structured in Business Central. So the first level that you'll see is the job card itself. So in business terms, this could be the project that you're working on. So if you're in the construction industry, this would be the name of the building or the bridge or um, the main um, infrastructure that's, that's being built. So, or if you're in IT, or if you're if this is an internal project, this could be maybe a new IT system that that's being implemented. Within the job card itself, you have your job task numbers. So again, in business terms, this could be your phases of a project. So phase one, phase two, and so on. And then within a job task, you have your job planning lines. So this is really what makes up. The, the structure of a job is your planning lines. And these are your budgeted total cost and budgeted revenues uh, for a given job task. So I'll just switch into Business Central now just to give you an overview of how this all looks in the system. So when you're in Business Central, the best, um, best role center to be on is this project manager role center. At least when you're, when you're learning it, this is this is a good one to be on uh, at all times. But there are some situations where you have staff that are doing jobs module functionality and they're in a different role center, which, which is okay. Uh, but if you are learning it for the first time, this is a good one to be on. With this role center, you can see that the job uh, related areas are all laid out for you in, in this uh, homepage. So you have your job, job tasks, customer items, and resources. So these three here are really the other areas that's really heavily involved in the jobs module. If you scroll down, you can see these tiles so are, are really relevant to the jobs module. So all your invoices come and due, anything that's related to your WIP uh, calculations. Um, if you have employees that do self-serve timesheet entry, this is where they can enter those. And if you're an approver of timesheets, you can see all the, uh, all the timesheets you have pending to approve here. Okay, so this is a good one to start with when you're, when you're learning the module. So I'll just enter the job, jobs cards now. So if you click jobs, you'll, you'll see a list of all the jobs that you have in your system. So you'll likely have more than me here. So I just have two for my demo. Um, especially if you're a PM, you might have multiple projects on the go here. So if I just enter this first one, you can see how everything's structured. So I'll just go over this job card window now. So the first section is your general section, similar to any other master record type of window in Business Central. You have your general section where uh, you would have your number. So this is a pre predefined field. Uh, it depends on your number series. It'll just pick the next one, the name of the job, um, and then the customer information. So if you plan to bill out all these costs to a certain customer, you would have to enter their customer information there. And then the next section is really the main area where most users will go to when, when they're doing any sort of jobs module functionality. It'll be, your, it's, the next section is your job tasks. So, um, Going back to that graph that I showed earlier, so you first have your job card, which is the main job itself or the main project itself. And then it's broken down into your job tasks. So as I said, it could be, you can structure this to be your phases or you can just list out all your job tasks without a phase. So with, and just a general information with how this is structured. So your job tasks are really taking uh, similar type of functionality as your account schedules. So if you, in this section especially, if you're doing, if you're familiar with account schedules, you're, you're familiar with these type of job task types. Uh, so posting, heading, total, 
that's kind of how this job task uh, area is structured. It's similar to your account schedules. Okay, so uh, you can start entering your job task numbers here. The only requirement is that at least one job task number has to be a posting type of, of, of line because you have to post, you have to be able to post somewhere. So one of the job task numbers needs to have a, be a posting type. Okay, so I'll just go through this one line as an example in my demo here. So you can have a start and end date of this particular task. And then these four columns are really what users are gonna be looking at on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first two here are related to your costs. So if I drill down into this budget total cost, these are your estimated cost for this given task number, okay? So if I drill down into this one number here, it'll, uh, it'll show all the details of this particular job task uh, budgeted line. So if I edit here, I'll just show you how, I won't enter a new line, but I'll just go over this one line that's already entered. So line type, so you have three choices, budget, billable, and both budget and billable. So when you choose budget, this is strictly just a cost line. So your estimated cost uh, for this planning line. If you choose billable, this line is related to your revenue. So your budgeted revenues for this planning line or this task. Both budget and billable means um, you, you're budgeting cost a certain cost, but you're also planning to bill that out to a customer. So that's what this means. Usually with budget billable, you see these more on fixed fee type of projects. So for a given uh, task, you might have multiple budget lines. So all the costs that you expect to incur for that task, and maybe every quarter or, um, or maybe at the end of the project, you'll have one billable line, which is a fixed fee that you're going to charge to your customers, right? Budget and billable is uh, more related to if you have a time and material type of project. So you, all the costs that you incur, you expect to bill out to your customer, right? So if I scroll down, um, as you can see, this is a budget and billable line. So I can already tell this is a time and material type of project. So if you scroll over, now you have your type. So you have three types um, of planning line that you can, you can enter, resource, item, or geo account. You can also do text, just, just uh, plain text. So resource means um, it will tie into your uh, resource data, all the resources that you have in the system. So in this line, it's currently a resource and we expect to use 10 hours. So Marty is estimated to work 10 hours, and that's the total estimated cost there. You can also have item. So you might have a project where you estimate to uh, purchase items. So, and so this will be tied to your inventory module, okay? And then the last one is GL account. So you might have a situation where you're budgeting cost just against the GL account. So maybe some sort of fee or expense uh, GL account, you can enter that here and whatever that amount is. Okay, uh, so this one just has one line, but you can have multiple planning lines for a given task. Okay, and then, so as I said, this is budgeted. So when you drill into here, it will show your planning lines. Actual cost, when you drill into here, it'll go into your ledger entries, job ledger entries. So this is pretty self-explanatory. So these are your actual costs that you incur. So when you open this, this will have all the invoices or timesheet entries that, um, that you've posted against this task number. So it'll have all the actual costs. These two last ones here, uh, similar to these two columns, first two columns, except these are now related to your revenues. So if I drill into here, this will drill down into, again, the planning line because it's a budgeted type of um, entry or estimated uh, cost entry. But this will just look at the uh, unit price line amount, so the estimated revenues for this task. Okay, And then invoice total, again, it's an actual 
uh, figure. So when you drill into here, it'll go into your job ledger entry. So this will populate with all the sales invoices that you, you've entered against, um, that you've billed out to a customer. Okay. Um, so that's just one way. Um, if you do have a situation where you're always creating the same job and all the task numbers are always uh, pretty uniform throughout all the jobs that you have, there's this process you called copy job tasks from. And what you can do here, you can actually copy the job um, tasks and planning lines from an, ex from an existing job. So if you have, you might have a job that's uh, called your template job where it has all the planning lines already filled out and you just um, copy those into new jobs, okay? So this is just a good way to um, save on the data entry. So what I've uh, gone over, this one example here, is a time and material job. So you can name it whatever you want, but I just named it time and material just to distinguish it. Um, this is a time and material I can tell because uh, each cost, um, each estimated cost here has an associated billable um, estimated uh, number. Okay, so any any cost we incur, we expect to bill out to the customer. If I go back and open fix fee job, the second one that I created, all the functionality is exactly the same. It's just how we built our job test numbers is is different. So. You can see here we have a bunch of budget type lines for for our, our tasks. So if I drill into here, this is strictly just a budget line. So just a cost line that we expect to incur. Okay, and then every end of the phase, we have this, uh, what I've named here is a milestone line or a job task, uh, but you can name it whatever you want. So every end of phase, we uh, expect to bill out a fixed fee to the customer. Okay, so that's uh, phase one. Phase two, we have a 20K um, fixed fee bill out. And then at the end of the project, we have this milestone for, for 25,000. Okay, so it, it's, it's the same, same idea. Um, it's just uh, the type of planning lines that you're entering and how it's structured is, is a bit different. Okay, um, and then there's other functionality I haven't really gone over. It kind of deserves its own uh, blog entries itself. So for example, you can have specific prices for, for a job. Um, WIP is a big topic, so you would calculate and post to the GL. Um, and then there's other ways to analyze a job as well in, in its different phases. So hopefully that helped and gave you some background information or introduction to the jobs module. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out to us and um, we'll schedule some sort of training. Thank you.